Mark Cuban is a famous billionaire. He owns the Dallas Mavericks. He hosts a very popular TV show. Now he may want to be president. He recently said he's considering a run in 2020. If he does, he said he'll run as a Republican, potentially mounting a primary challenge to President Trump. What kind of president would Mark Cuban be? He's a very direct man, so we thought we'd ask him. Mark Cuban joins us tonight. Mark, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks for having me, Tucker. So rather than ask you all the boring political questions, how you do it, how you raise the money, all that <laughs> stuff, I just want to ask you what you believe because I think you're really direct. So there are about okay. 506, I think it's 560 billionaires in the United States right now. In 2009, when okay. Obama took office, there were 200 fewer. So there's been a massive increase in wealth at the top end. Meanwhile, the middle class has remained stagnant. Is that a problem? No question. And what would you do about yes. it? Yes, it's a problem. The first thing I would do, rather than the tax reform we're looking at right now, I decreased um, payroll taxes significantly so that that money, instead of, being, instead of having every hour taxed as it is now, that money would go right into the hands of the people who need it the most. We have 77,000 people who get paid by the hour. We're ignoring them. Well, I mean, that would definitely put money in people's pockets. How would you pay for the entitlements they use? The entitlements in terms of which entitlements? Well, I mean, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, all that. With less tax revenue, like, how would you fund that stuff? Well, obviously, that's a challenge right now, and we need to find ways to reduce the cost of those entitlements while maintaining the same level of care. I'm a yeah. tech guy, and the reality is I would focus on creating technology solutions. I, you know, I have investments that I see myself where it can have an impact. I think there's a way that we can reduce the size of government, the size of bureaucracy that deals with health care. But it's going to take somebody who understands technology that can introduce technology to find those solutions. And I think well, you, it can happen relatively quickly. You definitely understand technology. And you've been one of the people, to, I think, to your great credit, who's been sounding the alarm about automation's effect on employment. You said robots are basically going to yep. kill a lot of jobs. I think you're right. Given yes. that is allowing about a million low-wage, low-skilled workers into the country every year legally. Is that a good idea? Is that the right level of immigration? You know what? You can argue both sides of that, Tucker. I'm not, I don't have all the data to make the final decision. But on uh -huh. one hand, you can say that it takes jobs away from people who need them the most. On the other hand, because of the demographic trends, you can say we need people to fill jo certain jobs. You know, if you look at agriculture, there's jobs that are going unfilled. So, you know, there, there's arguments for both sides. Um, I, I'm not ready to come to a conclusion. What, um, if you found out tomorrow that Iran had a usable nuclear weapon, would that justify a military strike by the United States? Um, not immediately, no. It would just depend what else we can do. I mean, at that point, obviously, diplomacy had failed. And so I would, again, I'm a tech guy, right? You can't right. ignite, you can't, you can't launch, you can't control a lot of these things just in the blind. At some point, you're going to have access to us. I think cyber, cyber military, if you want to call it that, are, are, you know, an aggressive or proactive version of cybersecurity, I think that has to have a real impact and that has to be a focus, and we're not focusing enough on it yet. I think there's a greater risk in our cybersecurity efforts than there are for bombings. I mean, if yeah. somebody can hack into our military, we're at far greater risk. And, and last question, if uh, the numbers show that a little over 40 percent of all kids born in America last year were born to women who were not married, who were born out of wedlock, does that bother you, that number? Yeah, I mean, that number's declining, first of all, but, but I'll say this very clearly, Tucker, you can't legislate morality. Right. And when government comes in and tries to legislate how people think about just about any topic, that's when we start having more problems. And so we can try to educate, we can try to support families, we can try to support church groups, we can support schools, we can support synagogues, we can support mosques, and that's how we can teach a lot of things. But if we try to legislate what happens in those areas, it's a slippery slope. Right. I guess, but my, my question is, do you think it's bad? That's it. I'm not even suggesting a solution. Does it bother you? I think, you know what, me, in a lot of respects, yes, but I think culture changes. Things that we saw as bad 50 years ago, we don't see bad today. That's Again, right. I'm not going to be a, a social justice warrior and try to tell people what's right or wrong. I just think if we educate people, we try to do the right thing, we support our kids, and we focus on educating them, these things tend to work out the, right, the way they should. Mark Cuban, thanks a lot for coming. I hope we see you again. Yeah, and thanks for the direct questions, Tucker. I appreciate thanks. them.